Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar book review. This is going to be my review. We're going to take a look at Avatar The Last Airbender Heart of a Hero, the uh, picture book that came out back in February. So it is the, still the most recent new Avatar book release that's come out. It hasn't been anything the last couple of months, but we're, we're building up to new stuff coming out in the next kind of couple of months, of course which is pretty exciting. Um, but I did want to uh, grab this and uh, show it off a little bit, especially because just yesterday I put out my guide on getting into Avatar books uh, with a focus in yesterday's video on the books that are not the obvious comics, novels and stuff like that. So uh, this book was actually featured in that video. So let's uh, take a more in-depth look at this. So this came out, uh, I think February 27th was the release date. It is a kind of hardcover um, avatar picture book the main content that's here in terms of like story content is just a recap of avatar so it's very similar to other picture books that have come out recently in terms of it being just like you're here for the new art new official art rather than necessarily what the text is here because the text is just katara basically telling ang's story that sort of thing but um, I do enjoy seeing new Avatar uh, art, especially this recent trend with the I Am Ang, I Am Zuko books, and now this of, okay, we're really putting some effort into the art to present like some really new uh, kind of interesting styles of art to in the retelling. And especially because this book is such a unique size format here, you'll, you'll note how wide it is um, and not super tall. Um, even on camera, it maybe looks a little bit more square than I think it actually is in person. In person, you really get the sense that like it's a rectangle. Um, if you show it this way, I think it more highlights that like, oh yeah, this is like a kind of annual style book. Uh, or it's kind of a similar size to a, a comic, a standard comic graphic novel, not an avatar graphic novel. Uh, when you look at it that way. But still, interesting, the wide art, and especially with some of the art being across two pages, makes it really unique to get such um, wide kind of angle shots on some of this stuff. But uh, yeah, the creators, as you can see here, story by Kat Zhang and art by Debbie Oak. Um, obviously, for the sake of the review, it's one of those things where um, the praise is going to go more to the artist. But I think even though the... The writing is mostly recap of Avatar. Um, there's some nice stuff with, in terms of how the recap is actually done. Because it has to at least be characterful. Because it is being written as if it's Katara telling Aang's story. So that characterization has to be good as well. And I think it's pretty solid for what it is. Uh, given that, again, it's, it's basically a book of art, art about Avatar. But the text is, I think decent and does what it needs to do and um, so yeah in terms of like form factor here like i said it's a w oddly kind of sized uh, hardcover book uh, it does have uh, the kind of a uh, dust kind of jacket style thing going on here so you can see here the uh, cover with the actual text and stuff like that on it is just a dust jacket you get your standard kind of blurb there with a little bit of art and then you get an introduction to the creators here, of course, on the side, along with some of the licensing stuff, which, yes, it, it, this is a fully official kind of canon book for Avatar. Uh, but, of course, there's not really going to be necessarily new canon details, but the art is official, like it goes through approvals. Like they can't say it's an Avatar book unless it's officially licensed by Avatar Studios. And it is. Um, but yeah, the actual hardcover itself, I like that you just get the clean art. I think that's a really nice decision there underneath, just to give you the clean art. And the same with the kind of back cover here. Really like the, the kind of background uh, image as well. Um, the spine, pretty standard there. Avatar Last Airbender, Heart of a Hero. And it is published by Little Brain Books, which... I think this makes it their first Avatar uh, book that they've released. Haven't announced anything else, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Are they going to be one and done or not? We don't really know. Um, inside cover, pretty nice. Just, you know, clouds and Appa on one side. But then I like that on the inside cover at the back, Aang's on, uh, sorry, Appa's on the other side. Sunset now, as if he's traveled the journey that we've been through kind of telling the story. 
that's a nice little touch here and you can tell some time care and attention has gone into this book um, there's your kind of uh, intro kind of title page here with some nice art with Aang and Momo uh, and stuff like that. And then you get into your first like actual image and this gives you a sense for kind of what it's what it's actually like. I obviously said like the book's pretty wide on its own. So double page spreads are very, very wide, but really interesting. It makes a lot of the art really stand out because it's in such a unique kind of uh, pre presented in such a unique way and the style I think is quite good but you can see there is your premise it's the kids of the southern water tribe asking Katara to tell her story her story Sokka's story with Aang tell the journey and that's exactly what she decides to do here as she starts telling the kids about her adventure um, so very, very fun stuff as we kind of get into this. And the the text, like I said, um, there's not too much to say about it because it is mostly recap, but I think it is reasonably well written. It's not so detailed that like it, it comes across as being straight recap. It definitely is like, yeah, someone telling this story would tell it in this way. And in that sense, it's like, you know, mission accomplished from the from the writing perspective. It's just, it's kind of difficult to overly praise it for, you know, something that you're not, you're not really going to talk about too much, I think, when it comes to discussing this book necessarily. Um, so yeah, there's the introductions to sort of the four nations. I really like that kind of paint, kind of brush, kind of uh, thing uh, going on here. And there's some nice style across like a lot of this. Um, this page, I'll, I'll have a specific section focused on this at the end to talk about uh, this uh, image of all the avatars, which is certainly worth talking about because, of course, you have the obvious four, the four before Aang, but then the inclusion of Zito and then the two other avatars, I think, is super interesting, which we'll get into uh, shortly. Makes me really wish there was like a caption that actually said like the names of two of these avatars what we don't have but um still some some cool stuff here you know you can see as the war starts so you can see this book obviously is meant to be sort of like for kids but it doesn't shy away from the fact that you know the idea of the fire nation attacks goes to war they attack the other nations and cause a lot of chaos um it's it doesn't go deep into the weeds on this that, that makes it kind of like shocking or anything like that but um it it it's faithful to what happens in the story and you go through obviously the idea of uh, what Katara knows of Aang's backstory you know the storm and her finding him and then we get into the idea of well, he struggled with uh, learning earth bending and um, he learned water bending there were all there were struggles surrounding fire bending I particularly like this page because uh, I think the the text is actually quite nice here this is obviously when Aang told you know Katara about why he ran away effectively um, deep down, Aang had the heart of a hero. He was brave, kind, and peaceful, but he needed help to discover it, a little guidance, a word of encouragement, someone to light the way. And the idea is, based on the image, that is Katara. She sat there and she listened to Aang. She helped him on his journey. She helped him to become that hero. And then on the other side of the page, you get the idea of Aang inspired her to kind of never stop fighting and uh, achieve what she wanted to. So it's it's pretty nice um, overall. And you get a similar page for, um, yeah, Toph, Sokka there. Nice dancing dragon kind of page there um, as we go through. And of course, you know, we, we go through the, the kind of finale stuff as well. Like you, they highlight the final battle here. There are points at which they are a little bit like vague overall. Um, you know, we were worried that to save the world, Aang might have to go against his nature, but he remembered the lessons he had learned. Uh, he showed the Fire Lord mercy. Like, do they properly explain the whole idea of, like, everyone was telling him to kill Ozai? Not necessarily, but, like, it's implied here. So it's this idea of, like, does it work as an introduction to Avatar for kids versus just showing them the show? I'm not sure and that's always going to I think be a little bit of a problem with some of these kids books and them trying to serve as that sort of like uh, it's telling the story of Avatar and I think that's the kind of big thing when it comes to these books is you know if we're going to do these regularly kind of going forward 
I do think we need to move away from everything being so focused on retelling the story of Avatar The Last Airbender. Because we did it here. We did it in I Am Ang, I Am Zuko, I Am Katara is going to do it as well. Whereas I think the art here could be better used if the book had was trying to do something a little bit more interesting. So that's why the upcoming picture book, My Cabbages, comes across to me as something that's like, yes, there we go. That's what we kind of want. Um, in that it's a bit of an odd style of book, that one, where like I think that's going to be like 20 something pages all about the cabbage merchant but they are promising that it will have new content and even from the preview pages we've already seen there is new content they present like the cabbage merchant's actual name and i'm assuming there'll be encounters with the group and other characters that we didn't see in the show and that's interesting whereas this is very much reliant on do you like avatar do you like avatar art grab these books because of that not that there's anything like inherently new in here and this is where a lot of the publishers, I'd be very much just like, hey, you know, Korra exists. I think Korra could use with getting this style of treatment because we have all these different styles of art for Avatar, but could we get that for Korra? And then even beyond that, I'm kind of like, could we do something like this for like Kiyoshi or Yang Chen? Just to highlight the new eras as like a, a, an introduction, a new avenue into getting into that sort of extended material uh, where those novel stuff could use more visuals and, and this is the way to introduce the kids to some of that stuff. Like that's a good use of that, not the stuff that everyone's already seen being retold like a million times in these books. And um, that's where like I, I'd like to see some progress be made as we go forward, if not just because... The future of Avatar going forward is Avatar Studios, and the plan is first movie is going to be adult team Avatar, not 12-year-old Aang again. Um, no, adult Aang. And then we expect similar stuff with Korra. We expect uh, other projects to be focused on other Avatars, and I think other eras of Avatar need to be highlighted in content going forward as well and i do think we need to see that not just in the most hardcore material in the franchise like the novels and rpg but i do think in, in even more the basic merchandise we need to see more of that sense of the uh era based storytelling and that page with the avatars in in this book is kind of like a, an interesting kind of thing of, of like that would have been some cool lore if you'd maybe explained a little bit there i get maybe it's not the the correct yeah, way to reveal maybe some interesting information but you know find an another way to make these books that little bit more interesting where it's not just buying it for the art and that the text has maybe a little bit more value to it overall but uh, just before we go into that section i mentioned at the start on kind of focusing on that avatar page you know a little bit of a discussion on the past avatars final sort of review recommendations I think it's a really good book for what it is. Um, it's like, what, uh, $19, I think, is the recommended retail price for this. I got it for €17. Euro. And I think for the hardcover book, like 40 pages, I'm pretty happy with that. Especially if you can maybe get it somewhere online for like a little bit cheaper. I think it's pretty good value. Again, I think it does depend on you actually liking these picture book style books where the art is the focus if you're just here for sort of like new content and you want like new lore that's not here in these type of books it's very much about the art and uh, for collectors like if you do want to collect all the books of course this is kind of a must have in your collection this is not a super forgettable book because it's a pretty unique form factor i think so I'd like to see Little Brown Books do something um, new and different, but I definitely would hope that it's it goes beyond just Avatar. Um, because if they just did sort of kind of like Little Golden Books are doing, and they just do like, say, a Zuko version of this, um, sure, like uh, people will still pay attention, but I think it would very much highlight that the publishers are like, oh, you, you, you're only doing Avatar because you I think that's the only thing that will kind of sell or work. If they did Korra, though, I, I think that could be super interesting because Korra fans, I think, are desperate for new content and would buy something like this because it's one of the few extra Korra books that even exists out there. Um, but like I said, let's go into uh, 
this. So we're going to talk about past avatars here because of, let me get the page up again so we can have full context for what we're talking about here. Um, where are we here? Yeah, this page here. We are talking about this page of the book, uh, specifically this one, actually. So the page with uh, Kiyoshi Zito, a, uh, another Earth avatar and another water avatar. Because note, Roku, uh, Kurok, and Yang Chen are on the other page. So the four before Ang are right here. Then the fifth one after Ang is going to be Zito. And then there's two that we don't really know about. So who are these two? We'll, we'll show that off again in a minute. Um, here's what we know of kind of past avatars. Like these are probably the main two pictures to showcase this. So in terms of full color, um, this was from the end of book one, of course. Korra connects to the avatar state and we get, of course, Ang, Roku, Kyoshi, Kurok, Yang Chen, Zito. And then it seems like pretty clear. This is locked in as our avatar before Zito. This guy... The Avatar Gimli, as, as I suppose people call him, given that we don't have an official name. So, um, depicted here as a kind of older man with a big beard, big mustache. Um, pretty interesting stuff here. And this matches up with the statues. Roku, Kiyoshi, Kurok, Yangchen, Zito. And then mustache and beard combo Earth Avatar, Avatar Gimli. And that, I would say more or less matches up with what we see here. Just think of this guy as a younger version of that guy. Whereas you assume like say like Roku, we know he's depicted as his like 70 year old self as he died effectively. So if we assume that this is like 70 year old like Avatar kind of Gimli here, well, I'm guessing this is like 40 year old um, Avatar Gimli here because you can see there is a mustache, there is a beard, um, he's wearing different clothes, of course, than he is there. And that's interesting by itself, because you ask yourself in a way, how did this image come about in this book? Obviously, the writer, to a certain degree, was like, okay, we need to explain what the Avatar is in a book that's recapping Avatar. Uh, so let's showcase this by having a page that has Roku, Kiyoshi, Kurok, and Yang Chen on it. I'm assuming that's maybe how it started out. And then they went to get approval on, we need art of this, is this okay, before it fully goes ahead. Like, they have to confirm what the piece of art actually is with Avatar Studios so it can go in an official book. And obviously, back and forth, it eventually came back to be like, actually, go further than that. Show seven avatars. Show the four you asked for, but also show Avatar Zito and then these two others. And it's like hey, why are you focusing on the other two? The implication from this image is that these are the seven avatars before Aang. And that would make sense. It is in order. We are in order all the way up to Zito, fire avatar. Avatar Gimli is an earth avatar. Water is up next. And yep, yeah, that's exactly what we get here. This is a water avatar here. And this is a water avatar right here. So what's going on here? Like, wh why the focus on this? Because we don't get this stuff too often. Like, uh, a brand new, like, 2023, 2024 image of past avatars in a random book like this, they don't do this that often. So it is quite unique in that, like, we're having to go back to, like, an image from 12 years ago here. Like, an art book from, uh, like, 10 years ago to get like other information that kind of relates to this effectively. You know, the novels from the last few years are of course covering the past Avatar. So it maybe suggests that internally at Avatar Studios, they have it a little bit more figured out kind of what's going on maybe with these past Avatars. Whereas it did feel like maybe back here, we were solid up to Avatar Gimli and then it was sort of like, and the others we roughly have an idea for. Cause you can see here, there's only a few of the other avatars that I think super stand out where it's like, okay, this guy's a little bit generic as a water avatar. Maybe they're more solidifying that right now. This uh, female uh, fire avatar has always kind of stood out a little bit. You can see her kind of here. Um, but then a lot of the other ones is kind of like, hmm, there's, there's a few interesting ones here, like uh, some interesting clothing on this female avatar and this one. Um, but uh, a lot of the other ones look a, a little bit kind of plain. So 
Um, it's just an interesting decision because like you can see here, Avatar Gimli, but then what about that other water avatar? You can see in the background, like, okay, 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 blue here, but that's a bit far into the background. Blue over here and here. So is the water avatar that we see in the image this guy? Just without the polar bear skin, which Corrupt doesn't always wear. Uh, or is it this guy who's actually wearing it here? Because it's a little bit confusing because, like, there's an image here and there's, like, one, two, three, four water avatars, like, all right next to each other. Whereas um, you could see... This image is the most kind of in the background. It's not super clear who's who. Um, so yeah, um, it's just an interesting one. Because the, the past avatars are always fascinating as, as, as hardcore fans. We always want to know more about them. We have some names that are unattached to like a visual of an avatar. So Avatar Salai is a, a name that we know about as a legendary avatar in the past. Um, who's obviously has to be before Zito. Is it the Avatar before Zito? Is Avatar Gimli, Avatar Salai? And then there's also Avatar Gun, Avatar Gun, whatever you want to pronounce it. That kind of maybe sounds a little bit water tribey, perhaps. That's, I think, what most of the fandom are assuming for that. Is that the name of this Avatar? Is that the name of the other water tribe Avatar in this book? Like maybe this character here or this one, Avatar Gun. Is that what they're going for with the fact that we have those two extra names? The fact that those two extra avatars are included in the book is that are we meant to match them up together or not? And based on the book, uh, I would say Avatar Gun is probably a little bit further into the past. I, uh, because of the way Yang Chen and this kind of talked about in the Yang Chen era, I do get the impression that Gun is probably a bit further into the past than just like two avatars ago. Um, but um, there's room to work with because we don't know how long every avatar lives and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up there. Uh, just this extra little kind of a lore section I wanted to do because of the super interesting piece of art. But yeah, Avatar Heart of a Hero. Um, if you're a collector, if you like the art, get it. Um, I think it's as one of these extra books, it's pretty nice. Um, so in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on this. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.